Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the evening service here at Dunes Baptist Church. Um, if you would grab your Bible, turn to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20, a very familiar verse, a very familiar passage. Um, probably nothing tonight that you haven't heard before um, if you've been in church for any length of time. But something is very important for us to um, use, very important uh, for us to apply to our lives, um, something very uh, very, very good that I do think that we can use even even now. Um, and this is my favorite verse. This is my life verse, Galatians 2.20 here. So I'll, we'll read through it once and we'll have a word of prayer and we'll get into the message this evening. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This evening, uh, we're going to look at this verse, and, and we're not going to uh, read this uh, whole long passage before it and, and glean things from it. We're just going to look at this one verse, and we're going to take it, and we're going to dissect it and see what do these things mean, and what should they mean to us now as we try to strive to live, God, live for God and do uh, serve God in the time that remains. Tonight, we're going to look at the subject of dead yet living, dead, yet living. Let's pray, and we'll get into the message this evening. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this morning's service, and, and Lord, I pray that you would take that and use it. But Lord, I pray that you'd also meet with us tonight. I pray that you'd help us to uh, learn something from your word, Lord. Guide my thoughts and my tongue as I preach, Lord. And I pray that you'd help each and every one of us to take something, that take away something from this message that we can use to better serve you in the time that remains. In Jesus' name, amen. We see here in this verse uh, several different statements uh, that we can take um, and apply to our lives because this verse in Galatians is truthfully uh, the verse that each Christian should be living by. That first part is true that we are crucified with Christ if we're saved because that happens at salvation. The problem becomes when uh, Christians don't crucify the flesh daily. Now we're going to look at this verse, and as I said, we're going to dissect it and, and pull some things out of it so that we can better serve Christ, and, and though we be dead to self, are yet living for God. We first see here this first phrase, I am crucified with Christ. If you're making an outline this evening, this would be our, our first point. I know it's just straight from the verse, but this would be our first point. I am crucified with Christ. We see that this crucifixion with Christ comes at the time of salvation. When we receive Christ as Savior, we are crucified with Christ. We become crucified. He, his sin or his crucifixion on the cross took our sin upon him. The reason he died was for our sins. So when we become saved, we can truly say that I am, I have, I have truly uh, been crucified with Christ. My sin was nailed to that cross, and I am, I am giving up my sin, and it is crucified to the cross of Christ. There are a couple things we must crucify in our lives in order to serve God. We see that this first one is the old man. This is the crucifixion that takes place at salvation. In Romans chapter 6, in verse 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So we see here that this old man that it's speaking of is our sin nature. We know in, in a couple other passages we're supposed to take off the old man and put on the new. This old man that is being spoken of here in Romans 6 is our sin nature. This sin is crucified to the cross of Christ. The old body uh, uh, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. We see as we crucify this old man, this is, as I said, the crucifixion that takes place at salvation. It's a wonderful thing to realize that we as Christians are no longer under the bondage of sin. It says that henceforth we should not serve sin. Many times we think, oh, well, I still have the sin nature inside of me. And yes, you do still have uh, that part, that, that, uh, that human nature that wants to sin. However, the, what does it say? The old man and the body of sin 
are crucified that the body of sin might be destroyed. The, the fact of the matter is, at salvation, that old man is crucified, and we don't have to serve sin any longer. We no longer are, mass, are ruled by sin. Crucify uh, this at salvation. We crucify this at salvation. We no longer have to serve sin. Not only is the old man something that is crucified at salvation, but there's also something we must personally crucify. And we see that's our personal will. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If we're going to take on the will of God, we're going to have to crucify our personal will. If we're going to live for God, if we're going to find out what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, we must put away our personal will, put away what I want, put away the things I want to do, put away the things that, that uh, hold us back. And, and let me say, uh, to be in the will of God, those will become your desires. Now, remember in, in the book of Psalms, it says, so give us the desires of our heart. Well, when we crucify the personal will and submit ourselves to God's will, then his will becomes our desire. That's what that verse is talking about. Only uh, we, we crucify our personal will so we can prove God's perfect will in our hearts and in our lives. We must get our will out of the way, but we see that we're crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. This means that our sin is crucified. We don't have to serve it anymore. And we see that our personal will is pushed aside and crucified as well so that we don't serve it, but we serve God. Notice next, our next thing uh, that we're going to look at, this next phrase, not I, but Christ liveth in me. Notice in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead to sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. We see here, first, that we are alive through Christ. In verse number 5 there, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. That word quicken there means alive. The word of God is quick and powerful. That word quick means alive. We are alive through Christ. Because of Christ's uh, finished work on Calvary, we talked about that a little bit this morning, because what, if he, because what he did for us, because his death, burial, and resurrection, because he took our sins upon him, when we trust in him, we are alive through Christ. But notice in Romans 6, chapter 13, this is taken a little farther. Neither yield ye your, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Not only are we alive through Christ, we need to live through Christ. We are alive through Christ. He's the one who's raised us and, and quickened us to Christ. He's the one that's made us alive again because we were dead in our sins. He's made us alive again, and because of that life he's given us, we need to live through him. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. Once we crucify the old man and we crucify our personal will, we need to yield control of our, our lives to Christ. I do believe that takes place quite a bit when we crucify our own will. But we see that this is a two-step process. Even the Christian, even once we're saved and we realize that Christ is crucified for us, once we realize these things, this is still a two-step process. We must not yield ourselves to unrighteousness. Remember I said we, we don't have to serve sin, but there's still that human nature. We, we must not yield ourselves to that unrighteousness, but... Yield to God. This is a, a two-step process here that we crucify uh, ourselves. We live through Christ. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. We're alive in Christ and we need to live through Christ. What does the next part of that verse say, though? It says, not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live. The life which I now live. We see there's two things about this that come in these next two phrases. We see this life that I now live in the flesh. 
This life I live in the flesh. We are in the world, but we're not to be of the world. I'm sure uh, every one of us at, at home, if I were to say how, how many have heard that before, you would all raise your hand. We've, we've all heard that before, that we live in the world. We have no choice about that. Okay, once we get saved, we don't just automatically, boom, you get to go to heaven. God has something for us to do on earth. He has service that he wants us to do. He has people that he wants us to reach. And so we are here on the earth, but he doesn't want us to be in the earth. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. We read that verse just a moment ago in Romans chapter 12. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have no choice about living in the world, but we have a, an extremely important choice to make whether we will live of the world or of God. Too many Christians want to live um, as, a, as a way of being in the world. They want to live of the world. They want to uh, do certain things and certain aspects of sin so that they can be accepted, uh, certain uh, social things that they get to do because, because they say, oh, this will help me be better accepted uh, by the world. But the, the fact of the matter is the church is not supposed to be accepted by the world. We're supposed to share the message of God and the message of Christ and the salvation plan of Jesus with them. And then they will become, uh, as we are, of, in the world but not of the world. We need to make sure that we don't get this idea of, oh, I'm going to do, do this little bit of sin so that I can reach the world. No, that's not what God says. He says, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Anytime we're not doing what God would have us to do, that's unrighteousness. Don't yield our members as instruments of unrighteousness, but yield to God. We see this life that we live is in the flesh. We don't have any choice of that, but ne the next phrase it says, by the faith of the Son of God. By the faith. What is this faith that he's speaking of? We know from Hebrews 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But we see faith here. Uh, there's a two-step two process here. Faith is how we are saved. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In, in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse number 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith. The grace that God has poured upon us, it takes the faith of us to put it in Jesus and accept that grace that God has given us. By grace you are saved through faith. Faith is how we are saved. We don't get to choose the method of our salvation. Our justification is through the grace of God, by the, faith, by the grace of God, through the faith that we have in Him. We don't get to choose the method of our salvation or our justification. God has it clearly spelled out. And I hit on that a little bit this morning. It doesn't matter what anyone else tells us. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. No matter what, how, how good it sounds, what they're saying, if they're preaching any other gospel but Christ, they're wrong. Only through God's grace, through our faith in the finished work of Calvary, can we be saved. But by the faith, we see that's how we are saved, but we also see it's how we need to live. Notice, I read this verse a moment ago, Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That sounds to me like something that applies right now. That's not talking about, oh, how the faith we'll have in heaven. No, that's the, 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 hub, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I can't, see, I can't see God with my physical eyes. I can see him in his word. I can't see the Holy Spirit living inside of me. I can feel him when he tugs in my heart and convicting me of sin or wanting me to do something. I can't see heaven, but I, I know that I'm going there because God has told me so. But that's faith. These things that are hoped for, it's not, a, as I, I said uh, this morning and a moment ago, it's not, it's not a hope of, oh, I hope that happens. It's a hope of, of, I know that's going to happen, looking for that blessed hope. So faith is the substance of those things. Because I know God is real. Because I know Christ is real. Because I know the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Because I know heaven is real. I have faith in those things. Many times we can't see what's ahead, but we need to trust that God is in control and he knows what's best for us. I have faith in God. What does it say? The life which I now live in the flesh by the faith. But notice it continues. It's not just faith. It's faith of the Son of God. If we're keeping track, this is our, our fourth main point. Uh, the Son of God. 
I'm just here, let's read the verse up to this point. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the faith, or in, in the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Uh, the life which I now live in the flesh, I'm sorry, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The rest of this verse we're going to look at under this uh, heading of the Son of God because it, these are very important things and they all refer to Him. But we see the Son of God first who loved me. The Son of God who loved me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. In 1 John 4, 19, it says that we love him because we first love us, loved us. We need to love him because he loves us. Christ loves us so much that he laid down his life for us. Greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Christ loves us so much that he was willing to give his life for us. Give his life as a propitiation, as the Bible says. Give his life as a substitute, as a sacrifice, as a ransom for us. Why? Because he loved us. How can we show him our love? He showed us his love. He showed us his love by going to the cross, by uh, enduring the, the shame and enduring the ridicule and enduring the mockery and enduring everything that was thrown upon him. He showed us his love. When he died for us on that cross, he showed us his love when he was buried in that grave and rose again so that he could take away our sins and take us to heaven when we die. He showed us his love, and how can we show him ours? We can show him our love by obeying his commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. He, he, says that, he tells us that in his word. Some commandments he gives us to read his word in Joshua 1.8, to be always praying. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, to be in church. Uh, Hebrews 10.25, to be a witness for him. Mark 16.15, and the list goes on. We show, him his, our, we show him our love by obeying his commandments. We show him our love also by yielding to his will. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 and in Romans 6 verse 13, we read both of these verses earlier. It talks about yielding, uh, not yielding our members of, to unrighteousness, but yielding to God. We also say, see that it said, be not, trans, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. We need to submit to the will of God. God has something for us to do. And we need to put ourselves under that and say, God, whatever you have for me, I'm going to do it. Whatever you have for me, I want to make sure it gets done. You have a task for me to do, not for anyone else, and I want to make sure it gets done. The first part of this verse, really, I, I, nevertheless, I live. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. The, the first part of that verse really tells us how we can show Christ our love for him. But we see the Son of God who loved me. And how is the verse to end? And gave himself for me. He gave so we could have. He died so we could live. He sacrificed his life so that we could have the opportunities to sacrifice ourselves back to him. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8 tells us about how Christ, how he loved us and, and gave his life for us. It says, And being found in fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He sacrificed himself in death. And us, because of that, need to sacrifice ourselves in our lives. We need to do what He wants us to do, even if it's not fun, even if it's not uh, pleasant, even if it's not the easiest thing we've ever done. We need to do what God has for us to do. God has a work for each and every one of us. Everyone uh, watching this evening, He has a work for you. He has a work for me. He has something He wants us to do. And He sacrificed everything for us. He sacrificed everything 
so that we would have the opportunity to sacrifice for him. We need to get away from, oh, this is what I want to do. And, and if it's not uh, in God's will, we, we kind of justify it by saying, well, it's not a sin necessarily. Think about um, the, the things like uh, going to football games on Sunday and, and keeping yourselves out of church for reasons like that and doing all these things. Is, is football wrong? No. Is, is, is watching a football game wrong? No. I, I, I don't have... TV, so I don't watch a lot of football games, but, uh, but that doesn't make it wrong. But we need to make sure that we're not putting it in a place it shouldn't be. We need to sacrifice ourselves. We need to yield our members, not as instruments of unrighteousness, but yield it to God. Put ourselves under God's hand and say, God, whatever you want for me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever you have that is your plan for me that only I can accomplish, I need to make sure it gets done because you've given it to me. I want to encourage you tonight to do that. Let's read this verse together once again. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Think about that. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ died for us. But Christ died, and because of that, we should be crucified with him. Our sin is nailed to that cross. Our old man is nailed to that cross. Our old man, after our salvation, is, is not part of us anymore. We can live right. We can do right. We can do the will of God because he has taken our old man from us. He's the one that lives inside of us. But Christ liveth in me. We're alive through Christ and we need to live for Christ. I pray this evening that you'll take these things. As I said, it's nothing uh, new, not a, not a long, uh, drawn-out message this evening. Uh, but I hope that you'll take it and, and apply it and use it. Realize that our old man is crucified with Christ. We don't have to serve him anymore. That Christ lives inside of us. That he wants us to yield ourselves to him. And he is the one who loved us. He loved us so much that he left heaven's glory to be born in, in, a, in a lowly stable, live a perfect life, and, and suffer for us. And he gave himself for us. He gave so we could have. He died so we could live. He sacrificed his life so we would have an opportunity to sacrifice for him in our lives. We're dead, yet living. Are we going to make the most of it? Are we going to submit to God? Are we going to say, I'm going to crucify the flesh. I'm going to crucify the old man. I'm going to crucify my will so that I can better serve God. So that I can be dead. Dead to self, dead to sin, and yet living for God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for this time, Lord. Not an ordinary service, Lord, but a time of using this technology to be able to meet with our church family. And Lord, I pray that you would bless the things that were said. Lord, I thank you for your word and, and everything we learned from it. And I pray that you would help us to take these things and apply them to our lives so that we can better serve you, that we can not serve self, not serve sin, but better serve you, Lord, in the time that remains. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you once again for watching the service this evening. Um, if you're a member of Dunes Baptist Church, we're looking forward to getting back together real soon. And if you're not a member, uh, but you're from the area perhaps, uh, maybe make a, a plan a visit out and come and visit with us so we can meet you, fellowship with you. And maybe you can even join our church family. Um, if there's anything uh, anyone needs, if you need anything, uh, go on the website and go to the contact page and we'll help you as best we can. But until next time, God bless and stay safe and we'll see you again real soon.